Okay, so today I'm just going to do a snap to grid for a um, top down movement base. And what I want to do is just uh, lay it, show you the layout, what I got going here. So I'm going to switch over right away to the screen and camera here. And what you can see is in my scene, oh, what's the, oh, no, this. So what I've done is I have created an orc. Just an orc here, a skeleton, some grass, and a path. Um, this new sprite actually doesn't exist, so but what I want to probably do with that is make a an animation, and I want to set that up to be create. We're going to call it grid. And we're going to create that with pistol. And what we want to do is we want to resize this to not one, no, 120. Actually, we're going to go 130 by 130 resize. Now we're just going to come here and we're going to get a put in a blue line, nice light blue maybe. And we're going to get a tool here. Just want to roughly create new object and we're going to add a tile sprite and we're going to call this grid create with pistol all right now we're going to do this resize 128 resize all right now we're going to go here Choose a blue color, zoom out, no. that's better. Should be pretty good. The only thing we might have to figure out is how to align that. So now, what I've done is I've come over and I've installed a Snap to Grid extension. And 
what that does is gives us the ability to set up our, our grid-based movement. So now over here in grid-based movement, I've done my every, every time what I do, the escape to quit game, so that when I load in, I can just hit the escape button and exit out of the preview. At the beginning of the scene, I haven't set anything up here yet, but I left it in there um, just in case I need to do something for the grid there. In the online examples, I am, what other people have done, they've actually pulled variables and things to determine their grid and their grid movement snap twos for collisions and things. So I've left that open. But what I've done here is I've just, I've already set up the skeleton it was just dropped, then snap the skeleton to a virtual grid using cells of 128 pixels by 128 pixels and an offset of four pixels by four pixels, which I may have to change. So now we're going to check that out. And there's nothing for the orc. So if I grab this orc and I move him, he could drop anywhere. But if I drop him, he last stops in his nearest grid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to escape. I'm going to go back in here. And I'm going to set this to a Z order of 2. Because preview. I just want to make sure that they're on top of the grid. Yeah, there we go. So you could use this for a city building game. So this, so you don't line up to your areas. You can put them wherever you want, which is great if you just want complete freedom and control. But often you're going to want things to snap. So for like puzzle matching games or block matching, match threes, whatever, this is what I could have used in my in my Tetris game. Um, instead of the physics model, I could have just used the snap to grid, and every time you hit a key, it would move it over, snap it into the next grid. But that being said, this is an evolutionary, evolutionary process of adding more and more skill set to my G develop. So that's what this whole uh, playlist is about, is just learning how to do new things. But that seems to work pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to do the same thing for the orc. So basically we're going to go add condition, orc, and then you can do being dragged snap to grid or we just dropped. I used just dropped. So I'm going to try this being dragged. Assign that one. And then I'm going to go orc. Snap to grid, 128, 128, we're going to keep the same offset of 4 on 4, because that's how big my blue pixel lines are, and we're going to give that a preview. So the skeleton drops in wherever you put him, wait, the skeleton is no longer snapping to grid. Ah, see, my orc snaps to grid as I move him, not just on the drop. But my skeleton is no longer dropping on the drop. Oh, because we can't put it in the same event. There we go. Preview. There we go. So when I let go of the skeleton, I can move him anywhere I want, but when I let him go, he drops in. Orc, he drops in as I'm dragging him. Not letting go of the mouse. Then the skeleton really moves over all the lines and doesn't snap until I drop him. Interesting. And there you have it. That's what I'm uh, showing you today. So it's a pretty short one. And tomorrow what I think I'm going to do is add some rotation and then maybe make a dice roll so that um, if the two touch on their collision mask, then the 
there's a dice roll to be had. Uh, I might even alternate so that it's like one turn, next turn, keep it manual. We'll see, I don't know. But for now, I'm gonna add rotating them by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to um, add, if they touch, there's like a random dice roll. They each roll a dice and the highest dice roll wins. I might have to do that in a, a separate video, we'll see. Anyway, that's it for today. Have a great day. See you in the next one.